One of the conditions uh, that Saramago gave us when we asked for the rights was that it, w it, r it remained, as in the novel, in an un undisclosed location. Um, uh, the book's written that way, and uh, we'd, all, we'd, we'd agreed. That's what we wanted to do it. But that meant that we had to come up with a city that wasn't, that was no landmarks, no uh, identifiable architecture. It couldn't be little. Um, you know, uh, yeah. there couldn't be any Eiffel Tower or any CN Tower, or no towers at all, actually. There couldn't be any towers. No Calgary Towers, either. That would do it, too. Yeah. So, um, we, um, our solution was to come up with uh, an amalgamate city, uh, combining, for instance, Toronto, which is pretty unidentifiable anyway, and uh, somewhere like, well, it's true, you know, you, know, you never know, you, you don't, there's no particular Toronto look, except for the CN Tower. Um, so uh, we we thought of a number of different locations, but then we, when we met Fernando in São Paulo, Brazil, it immediately struck us as the perfect city because it's a huge city, the fifth biggest city in the world, uh, but it's it's really disorienting city. It has no mountains, no ocean, no river. Well, there's a little river, but no distinguishing architecture, and it's very un. No one, there's not a lot of tourism there for, 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 for one reason, because there's not a lot of big tourist sites. So um, it just seemed a perfect match for the film. Um, and Sarah Mega wanted in English so that it would seem more international, and that meant it a cosmopolitan city, so we had to make a multi-ethnic cast. So that one decision had a lot of implications. Um, but I feel, I feel it's very successful, and partially that's to do with Fernando, the director, who, who's able to create this sort of reality of the city that you don't question, but on the other hand, you don't know exactly where you are. Any questions from the floor?